refinance is another term. And essentially, so if we looked at debt consolidation, typically debt consolidation has fees, origination fees, less control over how that gets paid. And typically the rate is less than what you had. So if you had a 9% car loan and you could debt consolidate it to a 6%, you would be saving money, right? Or so you think you would be saving money. But the way the debt consolidation company makes their money is A, they're charging their interest rate. So they got rid of what the other institution was getting off of your interest. This institution is willing to collect 6% off of you. And on top of that, the debt consolidation company has an initiation fee, an origination fee, call it, that helps with the terms of their debt. Plus, because you moved the debt, you technically refinanced it and you reset the terms of the loan. So let's say you had a car loan for seven years was the note but you have five years left on it at 9%. If you move it to the debt consolidation at 6%, they might restart it at seven years again. So when you look at the total length of interest and costs, you actually end up paying more often when you do this than if you would have just stayed with your car at that higher rate and kept paying it down the traditional way of just making extra payments. Most of the time, people are better off not consolidating their debt because they're just thinking, how can I get a lower monthly payment? That's how most uneducated people are thinking. So these companies are making massive profit because the consumer is only thinking this, not total cost, okay? So now, if we take debt consolidation with this strategy of replacing your checking account, I make the argument that A, it's cheaper, usually with a line of credit with these tools, usually in most cases, there are no fees. So no fees, cheaper, more control. What do you mean by more control, Denzel? I can do whatever I want with this line of credit, number one. Number two, when I go to move the debt into the line and then I go to move my cash flow into the line to pay it down, that's principal dollars paying down the balance owed on the line. Let's say, and my marker's dying here, so I have to get another one. Let's say you had a credit limit of $25,000. It's a credit limit and you owe 10,000 because you just moved your car debt over into the line. So now you owe 10 and you have a cash flow of a thousand moving forward plus whatever the payment was. When you make that thousand dollar payment to the 10, right? Obviously brings it down to nine. Okay, cool. But let's say an emergency popped up and you needed that thousand. Well, you can immediately reaccess that thousand, take it back out, now owe 10,000 and handle your emergency. Versus if you would have made that thousand toward the car loan, let's say, or a thousand dollar extra payment towards a debt consolidation company, you lose control of the thousand dollars. So you have more control, no fees, and it's cheaper, even though the rate might be higher. Because again, the rate is 8%, but the daily periodic rate is way less than nine, then six over here. So now you have to say, okay, well, how many days am I paying $2.19? So then you have to work your math by figuring out the days you get paid and the days you have bills, right? So where this gets really interesting now in terms of how you can speed up your velocity of money and essentially reduce your daily periodic rate, if done properly, you can take 8% and pay less than say 2%, less than 3% over the span of one year, let's say over 12 months or over six months or three months, or even one month, like looking just month to month, what I actually paid in interest versus what I would have paid if I would have just made extra payments. And in some cases, doing this strategy might yield the same or similar results if you would have just made the extra payment. So not every time is this strategy going to work in your favor.